Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Unknown Armies, book one, play. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, featuring this tabletop RPG, where the characters reach their objectives through occult means and fight the status quo, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about avatars and archetypes. Humans are complicated beings, as any adept could tell you. Our personalities, ourselves, are split across several levels and we hardly even notice. The conscious mind holds the thoughts that we are aware of. The superconscious mind provides intangibles like conscience, imagination, social understanding. Then there's the unconscious mind. Despite what the conscious mind thinks, it's the unconscious that calls the shots. The unconscious makes sense of the world by analyzing patterns and providing the results to the conscious as needed. But it has another job as well, to connect you to the rest of your species, so that you can deal with the dangers of the world together. The collective unconscious has been around since the first human walked on earth. It has no will of its own, but it writes into our minds as readily as it reads from us and its memory is long indeed. For humans, life on Earth usually falls into one of a number of predictable patterns. These patterns of similar personal experience draw on and write to the same areas of the collective unconscious. Rarely, very rarely, a path builds up so much power that it develops a consciousness of its own. The human whose life experience best matches the path in that moment is drawn into it. This means being sucked from mundane reality and through the collective unconscious, living life without dying, ascending to an existence where probability takes the place of matter. There they take personal control of that element of human experience. These immortals are known as archetypes. Archetypes are the conscious embodiments of a specific aspect of human experience, representing the important parts of life. All paths written into the collective unconscious are drawn from direct human experience. The collected archetypes of humanity are known as the invisible clergy. They are many and varied, called up by the needs of mankind in critical moments. In the instant that the invisible clergy reaches 333 members, the universe ceases to exist. Creation is uncreated, all its energy flowing back into the archetypes that embodied it. There's no set timetable for the creation of new archetypes. These things happen as they will, when the urgency in the collective unconscious becomes unbearable. Let's talk about avatars. Because the archetypes are so potent in the collective unconscious, the paths they embody are familiar and readily understood by all of us. Avatars are people who align themselves with an archetype's path. It's not always an easy route to follow, but with sufficient dedication, great influence can be had. The power drawn from an archetype manifests primarily through access to channels. Mystical talents granted to avatars at various degrees of attunement to their archetype. A secondary effect of the attunement is known as theme music. This is uncontrolled and uncontrollable spiritual static which surrounds the avatar. As an avatar of the teacher, you can expect to field a lot of questions from strangers, particularly children, and there's nearly always a pencil in your top pocket. When a potent avatar of the rebel walks into a bar, chances are there's a James Dean movie playing on the TV behind the counter, or something like Wanted, Dead or Alive playing on the jukebox. Theme music is rarely directly helpful, of course, but then it's rarely directly harmful either. The very pinnacle of the avatar's path is held by the God Walker. There is only ever one God Walker at a time per archetype and the powers associated with such a lofty position are immense. In this section of the book, you have all of the thematical and mechanical information to become an avatar, to ascend. 
but you also have descriptions of the different archetypes, their taboos, their symbols, their suspected manifestations through history, their masks. So you have things very easy to understand, such as the captain, the explorer, the firebrand, the guide, the messenger. Pretty much any information concerning avatars and archetypes is contained in this section. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part we are going to talk about adepts. This book is quite complete when it comes to occult philosophy. This could serve as a primer in occult philosophy. And it is very well adapted to the fiction. I have a question for all of you. What sort of archetype do you feel drawn to in your life? Do you find yourselves in very specific situations all the time? Or perhaps there are drastic changes that put you in similar situations over and over again? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this part of the review and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you. And see you later.